I always this is already cut out. Okay. But it's not critical this time of year, so I, I just pull it off with the rain. I just pull it back over there. I'll have another one on, on the east side, and I may put one on the south side, but I'm going to definitely take and have one on the roof too. It'll just suck it out a lot faster. I, I probably will end up putting the ceiling fan in here too, to kind of help pull it up. Or, you know. Maybe get a thermostatically controlled exhaust fan, solar fa solar fan. Yeah, might. You know, there's a gazillion things I could do, would do. But this, again, this started out as just a, a whim. You know, I want to figure out how to make these things, mm -hmm. and it's turned into this. And right now, if somebody was to, this is not complete. I don't have my. I've got my solar panel, one panel. It's 100 watt up on my shed, but it's not connected yet because I don't have the connectors right. Um, that. The solar panel, or the solar panel, the solar outfit, and everything in there, and the solar water heater. Are going to be, you know, you're looking at several thousands of dollars just for the materials. Um, and it's the wood is 50 percent more this year than it was last summer. Keep okay. track of wood. Yeah, did you buy the wood, or was that just from reconstruction? You know? No, I, I, some of it was bought. I got a, a friend of mine who knew somebody who has a company that they go into. Uh, construction sites, and when all the wood's left over, they can't send it back. Right. So they sell it to, to somebody for ten cents on the board, or five cents for the board foot, and then they turn around and they sell it to people like me at ten cents for the board foot. Mm -hmm. And so they had uh, some two by fours that were sixteen foot long. They were twisted and things, but I figured if I cut them into five foot lengths, I would be able to use most of them. And I used probably about three fourths of the, the pieces. Uh, but they were twisted, and so, so I had trouble getting some of these to match up really well. But I've got, let's see, some new wood. When you do with new wood, I mean, you cut that, and it's almost like great. Pass that around. Let me have that wood. Like this is what it looks like. One of these looks like. And... It's a lot easier to fit this tight when it's straight wood, okay. okay? But I've even since figured out a way to make it even better than this. But again, I'm doing it by myself. I didn't have all the wherewithal. But it still turned out very well. You know, this is pretty good. And this thing is incredibly strong. Domes are incredibly strong. Is that just nailed together? You got screwed together? You got screwed glue? together. Glue? No. No, you don't need to glue it. No. You see, I got plastic on here, which is like really cheap. Well, actually, this plastic—it's it was a 35 by 35 foot sheet of greenhouse plastic that has five layers of what it does: anti-drip, anti-fog. I don't know all these things in there. And it cost uh, 200 and some bucks. We, right over on the entry there on the wall, I have the company I got them from. I saved it. It's, it's up on the wall. You can write that down: Jensen Ging Ging or something like that. They're out of Israel. It's really good stuff. Um, but I'm going to, from now on, I'm going to use polycarbonate plastic. It's two layers. Um, because this stuff, I mean, that's I didn't know what I was doing. How to piece it real good. I did, I did okay, but it, I would like it to be tighter and a little bit nicer. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's a learning process for me, and I'm going to pass that on. Now, on, on some of the upper triangles, do you ever get problems with the rain sagging them in and having to... No. No, no. The biggest problem I have is, is when I got up here, was, I fitted it was all right. But when I got down over here, the overlap was so much, I had to start cutting it in. And there's a couple places that that it will drip a little bit. But I can overcome that when I replace it with polycarbonate or something like that. And I know more how to fold it and how I'm going to do it better too. It's a learning experience for me. I didn't. Have, I don't have anybody teaching me these things. I have to right. figure it all out. I want to pass that on to everybody, which is kind of the goal. Um, but I also, I had to go down all the way down to the ground, and then I had to go out about a foot away, so that when I put the compost in there, it's, it, it's another barrier to keep moisture from coming in, and things as well. Well, and, um, I think on your insulation, too, I, you may almost be just as effective by, like if you put another layer of plastic on the inside of there, and that vapor barrier, no, uh, I don't think you, you would want to do that. that. Well, I, yeah, you could. I thought about that too, but then Is I started that? thinking about it, and, and I think I saw the, the explanation why somebody's not doing it. Oh, I know, like webfordeath.com. Uh, 
Okay. He had that as one of his answers to a question one time. The problem is, and I, I already figured that out, what you do is you get condensation in there. From coming out? Right. right. And, and, then, okay. and then, like I'm like, like, uh, saying, you'll start getting mildew and stuff like that in there, too, just because uh, of the moisture. So okay. there's, there's gives and takes with levels of barriers in there. What, what's the insert in, in here? That's well, that's, right. okay, this is, this is again, that company, uh, the wall I got over there. Okay. Mm. City people, it's a, I don't know what it's called, but it's a, a real stiff plastic. It works really well. Um, I, I don't remember, there's a name for it. I can't tell you at the moment. I can find that out for you. But if you go on, to, write down the name of the company. Oh. I don't have, I, I can go in and read it, but here, I'll tell you. Okay. Since we're, people might get, how you doing? Uh,